For Aslan Media, this is Reza Aslan. It's Friday, August 13th. Friday the 13th. Now hopefully this is not a harbinger of bad luck because today President Obama once again reminded Americans that by the end of the month, that is in two weeks, his promise to remove all troops from Iraq will reach its next major milestone. By September 1st, we will go from the 64,000 troops that we have in Iraq right now to 50,000 troops. Now, according to President Obama, those 50,000 troops will stay in Iraq primarily uh, to train Iraqi police and armed forces, and then by the end of 2011, we will have removed every single combat troop out of Iraq. Now, that's from a high of 170,000 troops at the height of the war. Now, we have to understand that this is a promise that the president has made really since before he became the nominee for the Democratic Party. So it's at the very core and center of the Barack Obama administration. And obviously it has enormous support amongst Americans. So in some ways it seemed like everything was going Obama's way. But then something happened yesterday. Iraq's senior military officer, made an announcement to Al Jazeera in which he said the truth is is that Iraqi security forces aren't going to be ready to take control over the country by 2011. In fact, he said that the security forces wouldn't be ready until 2020. That's a decade from now. And he specifically asked the U.S. administration to keep American military troops there for another 10 years. Now, almost immediately, other members of the Iraqi government, including a man by the name of Saad al-Muttalibi, who's an Iraqi government spokesman, came out and said to Al Jazeera that, no, 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 the general was just speaking on his own, he was speaking off the cuff. In fact, that the Iraqi government is more than ready to take control of its security situation on its own. He said something very interesting, too. He said, quote, we pose no threat to our neighbors, none of our neighbors pose a threat to us. Well, that's true. Iraq doesn't have really a nation that it's at war with. It's not an outside force or a neighbor that poses a threat to Iraq. It's what's going on inside Iraq that poses a threat. This is, of course, referring to the various insurgency groups and Al-Qaeda affiliates, whether they be Syrian or Palestinian or Egyptian or Saudi, they are the ones who have been killing Iraqi military and civilian personnel. That's where the threat comes from. And the truth is, is that the general was right. Iraq is by no means in a position to ensure its own safety and security from these non-state entities. Now, over the last few years, certainly since 2006, the truth is, is that violence has dipped precipitously in Iraq. There is now, at this point, an average of about 50 Iraqis a week who die. Now, 50 a week is an enormous number. Let's not forget about that. But it is nothing compared to the hundreds, the thousands of Iraqis who were being killed on a weekly basis only two, three, four years ago. So in some sense, Iraq is doing remarkably well. On the other hand, this month, August, has seen some of the most deadliest uh, violence in years. In fact, the month of August has been the de deadliest month in Iraq for about three years at this point. And obviously there's an enormous amount of frustration that's building because of the fact that the Iraqi government can't seem to figure out how to build a coalition to actually govern the country. And the longer the Iraqi government cannot provide the kind of government and security that Iraqis need, the longer that these other forces, the Al-Qaeda forces and the insurgency, will be able to make headway. Now, we should always remember that there are also a hundred thousand contractors and armed mercenaries that are in Iraq at this point, and they are also working to train Iraqis. But even with this number, there is still a debate raging in Washington right now whether Iraq is actually ready to take care of its own, <clears throat> excuse me, to take care of its own security. This is the question that we want to pose to you. Are we ready in the United States to get out of Iraq? Is Iraq ready? to have us get out of Iraq. What will happen if we leave Iraq 
and find out that we have to just return again. And what about this massive billions of dollars that we spent forming a military base in Iraq, a base that at least the president promises we will have to dismantle? These are all questions that have yet to be asked. And of course, there is an enormous amount of euphoria here about the notion that this war might be grinding to an end, but there are other issues to be dealt with. So the poll question today is about Iraq. Are the Iraqis ready for us to go? Are we ready to go? Now I asked this last part, are we ready to go? Not because I think that there are Americans who want this war to continue, but that the fact is, is for us to leave, we need to make sure that Iraq is safe with its neighbors. That includes Syria and Iran, Iraq's most immediate neighbors. Now both Syria and Iran are absolutely vital to Iraq's safety. Without their help, without their assistance, there's no way that American troops can actually abandon that country. But they are both America's enemies, which means that we're going to have to sit down with the leaders of those two countries and figure out a way to get them to help us leave Iraq. A lot to talk about this week, and hopefully we'll see where this all leads. For Aslan Media, I'm Reza Aslan.